This is a two ton floor jack by Sears. When I tighten it all the way and I try to lift it, you can see the problem. Just doesn't lift. So I bought a rebuild kit and we're going to rebuild this today and get it back into work condition. And it's a nice jack. It's made in Japan. It's very heavy duty. But obviously the seals are bad. So I purchased this kit and we're going to replace basically everything that's replaceable in it and uh, let's go through that step by step we got to totally take it apart drain it <clears throat> put it all back together get all the seals and then refill it and I've got some specific hydraulic jack oil so I recommend using hydraulic jack oil and by the way, I also did take the cap off the cylinder and, and fill it to the absolute top just to be certain that that wasn't the problem and obviously it wasn't. So let's take this thing apart. So this is the rebuild kit and I'll have a link in the description. These are about $50. But there's a wealth of things in here. Series of large O-rings, seals, wiper, copper uh, seals, multiple ball bearings, other seals and wipers, and then many other split rings, many other O-rings. To start out the disassembly, we need to have a number of large wrenches. Because this is made in Japan, everything's metric. Even though it came, and I purchased it in 1983, I believe, so it's almost 30 years old. We need a 26, 24, and a 19 millimeter to get this going. These feet had to be taken off because one of the bolts that attaches the feet attaches the oil box or the pump to the frame. So we, we got those three to take out. So I've turned it on its side and I think it'll be best to take these off first. I've got a ratchet at 19 millimeter for these bolts. And because they've really never rusted, they've always been inside, they're coming out okay. set that aside. Now we'll get this one out. A little force just to break it loose. It's been a while. I also want to take the cotter pin out that's holding the piston in place, so I've loosened this. I'll extend this up. And I can see the cotter pin in here. I'll try to just straighten those arms out. I did it. Okay, cool. Now it's spring-loaded. So it'll want to come back here. But then here's that cotter pin I wanted to take out. But now the piston is disconnected from the lifting arm. We'll finish taking these apart. 
This one has the large spring that we have to be careful with. I'm pretty sure the spring's going to go boing when I take this out of there. There it comes. So this bolt that holds the spring is only threaded here. These parts are only threaded close to the nut area. These parts are free to move. So by doing that, we got this lifter arm off, which has the gear that interacts with the gear that opens and closes the valve for the pump. So we're just about ready to get that out. Next thing I want to do is get this spring off. So I lifted this out, got the spring off, and we're almost ready to take the pump out. All right, there's the pump. That's what we wanted to get out. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Okay, I want to open this up so I can drain all the oil out of it. This one opens pretty well. That one's not going anywhere, so I've got a tool of persuasion here. That may have done it. All right, we're going to take all those out and drain it. Okay, so we can take this out. Nicely protect it. That's the plunger. That's in beautiful shape. Just leave that wrapped up there. That oil is in good shape. It looks so nice. Nice and clean. Nice. It's not dark. Yep. There's one of the there's one of the washers we're gonna take out. <clears throat> so for this nut we need a twenty nine millimeter wrench. It's a big one. We're probably gonna have to put that in the vise to get it to get it stabilized. Look at that. That pump oil is clear. Okay, to get this nut off, I had to put it in the vise. This is a giant Colombian vise that I'm getting ready to do a rebuild on, so stay tuned for that. Well, I may have to put an extension on that. All right, to get this to go, I had to put this this wrench extension on here, give it a mega crank, <clears throat> and I did get it to get get loose a little bit. So we'll drain that as well. Okay, let's drain the. It's called the block, the oil block. Take the plunger out first. Oh. Especially once it got loose, it got super loose. Now, there are many important parts in here that we need to be cautious of. So, always be careful when you take these things out. There we go. There are the bre there are the copper rings we need to replace. There's a ball in there. That looks good.
Copper ring is next. There's the plate and the second copper ring. Very important to hold on to that if you're going to replace it. Oh, not if you're going to replace it. We're going to replace it. Went back. Then we're going to try to take this off. There are two types of uh, these. One, this is screwed in. One, this is welded or welt. This is a welt. This one has a welt. Now that's probably going to take the vise again. We'll let this we'll let this drain for a minute. <sighs> okay, I can't get that with a pipe wrench either. So I got one with a piece of pipe on it. Yeah, that's all it takes. With a long enough lever arm, you can move the world. We're starting to see some other oil o rings that need to come out too. Let me be sure we get that fully unscrewed first. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, we've got to take this final screw out. So I've loosened it up. It's got a long thread on it. And that's got another ball bearing in it also, so there it comes. And then one more important piece down here. Let me tip this up. This needle valve comes out of this hole. That's held in there by that spring. I'm trying to get this piece out, which is a wiper and an O-ring. And it's been painted in place and it's really, really, really stuck. So when you're using a pick like this, be careful not to harpoon yourself and drive that into your hand. We're just going to use this nice little screwdriver to start prying that up. And look at that. There it is. We need to get rid of that so we can set our, our final seal here. So... I got all the rubber parts of the seal, but I don't have the metal part out. That's got to go so that this piece will fit in here. I'm going to pound it out on the vise. So I put it in a vise, put this pin punch in here, punch through it, and this came out. This should have been taken out with the remainder of that seal. Now let's take a look at how the new part fits. So look how nice that looks now that we've got the remainder of this crappy thing out of there. This was held, this was like this. That needed to come out. Should have been punched out initially, but now look, our new seal fits in there beautifully. So we're gonna use a little of this super lube. Let's put a little bit of that in here. And put a little around on our O-ring. On our, on our on our on our new on our wiper gasket we've taken again this cylinder out this is the relief valve it's got a single ball bearing in it and it has two brass 
or copper washers. And in the kit that came for the, for the rebuild, the washers with it are considerably thicker. So the difference is almost double. So I don't think I can use these, the new ones, because what happens is I, I did put them in and when I screwed this, put this back together, not uh, the threads were exposed that hadn't been painted when it was first put together so it was sitting too high and I put it together and the gear didn't mesh so I'm going to go back and use the original copper and of course it has one ball bearing. Here we have an adjustment, we've got a seat, a new o-ring, and then we've got actually two ball bearings. So we have to be cautious with that to be sure that we replace those. And there's an o-ring right here, or a washer, a black washer. And so we need to put a new one of these in, which I did. A new seat, which I did. A new ball, new small, a new large ball bearing. And then we can replace this. This has very substantial threads. This screw, this screw com comes adjusted from the factory. And if you do take it out, there's a screw in here with a needle valve. Screw it all the way in, keeping in mind how many turns, and then after you reassemble it, screw it all the way in tight and back it out that same number of turns and you'll have the exact um, adjustment for it. It'll, it'll work well. This is an oil seal oil sweep, which I took that out with a, with a, with a screwdriver and then we just reseated the new one with this three-quarter inch socket it fit perfectly so I'm gonna put our ball bearing back put our two copper washers this back and again this has a 29 millimeter socket we'll, we'll just tighten that up I'll put that on the uh, on the vise and, and really tighten that up Tightening that big screw. There we go. This is the screw I was tightening. I can't tighten it anymore. And this is that 29 millimeter. No. Good. So we replaced this O ring, cleaned out these holes. So there was good movement of fluid. Cleaned the threads. I took out that oil seal. And then to reseat it. This is actually a one and a quarter inch socket. That has been seated. That's in good shape. Now for this part, which I think is basically the most critical part. So like I said, this is really the most, in my opinion, the most critical because this was the part, this seal, which I've replaced, was the most critical part. We take this snap ring off and the seal that was in it was cracked and broken and just nasty.
And then there's this backer, which I took out and buffed because it had some tarnish on it. So we'll put those back together. This is the critical part for sure. I'll get that snap ring. snap. Now we're going to take the inner part of this out. To do that I've connected it to the vise but only on the painted rim so it's not going to cause any trouble with the hydraulics. This is a 10 millimeter wrench. And there's a spring in here in a second we'll see it. and a ball bearing. So this is what came out. This has got a breather. It's actually a screen on the top here. It's been kind of dinged up. A spring, a little seat, a little seat on the spring here, and then the ball bearing. So we'll get the ball bearing back. Seat on the spring. I put all new in there. And then we'll tighten this back up. 10 millimeter. Good. Let's get ready for reassembly. This part with this wiper goes in here. So that fits just like that. And then this is the wiper, the oil seal. This goes outside that. This has the hole that connects with the cotter pin to the body of the body of the jack. Of that new oil seal there, that new O-ring. So to properly tighten this, I have to return to the to the vise again and hold it in position while I tighten it. So I've got it held in place with my newly refurbished Wilton vise. We'll put this pipe wrench on it. Get this tight. Okay. Time to reassemble the jack and fill it up. All right, let's start to put this baby back together. There, it just drops in there. So I need to align the hole for the cotter pin. Okay. Get that cotter pin back in there. got a puller here. And I got it. I was able to hook it in. Okay, I took this bar out which helped me get my orientation and was allowed me to get that spring out. And it fits in here. So it has to go this way. I gotta turn it a little bit. We're gonna close the base off by putting the wheels on next. Okay, I've gotten it just off the edge. The longer the bolts goes into the oil block, I 
and get that started. Then the shorter bolt goes up front, which just screws into the frame. I think it takes a 19 millimeter. Speed it up a little bit. Not too tight because I want to get the other side on next. That looks good. Got to get it to thread into the oil block. All right. Spin it home. Tighten the other side. Tighten the front. There we go. So now the oil block is secured to the frame with these wheels. We're almost home free. Still got to get this big roll pin. Okay. Got to get this roll pin through here, which we'll do next. So you can see I've had some problems. Just trying to get it oriented. Up, oh, And there he goes. So once that's done, it's uh, game over because it's just... Uh, Hook back up this snap ring. That was very nice. Thank you so much. Snap ring. Get that oriented. There. Wonderful. Now just to put the final arm on here and fill it with oil. Actually at this point it's going to be way easier to fill it up with oil. So we're going to do that because we've got great access to it. Okay, we're going to fill it with oil. It's got a very small hole with oil. Really slow. I'm trying not to spill, but I am spilling some. Okay, we're going to use a syringe. Yeah, it doesn't leak, it doesn't drip. I was losing about half the oil when I was using the funnel. I can see it filling up. Okay. So it's right at the very edge now. So we're going to fully assemble it, pump it, bleed it out of, with get, get the air out of it. Fill it some more and then we'll cap it. But we got to put this piece on next. Okay, so I've got this piece now on here. And I think we can... Oh, that was good. Now I'll try to align this one, but this one has the spring. Okay. Okay, so... The flat part of the spring goes against the body, and we'll keep that. We'll keep the um, the arm outside, and we'll reposition this. These are 26 millimeters.
the flat part of that rotating bar in here goes up. <clears throat> Don't worry, we'll get the spring in a minute. And once it's over there, let's drive that spring back on that post. All right. So I got the handle here. Tighten it. And we'll pump it. And I'm looking at the oil level. Look at that, the jack's going up, it's so great. Then we'll just lower it. And I'll just watch the oil level. Yep, and it returns right to the edge. So, we're good. We're gonna put the fill plug back in. So we got the oil plug in. Now we're gonna turn it over on its side and bend that cotter pin so it doesn't come out. a little of the oil. Okay, a few extra things. I oiled the front wheels through the little oil slot, the rear wheels, the bearings. I put a little oil in the on the edge for this cup to rotate on and I greased this cylinder and this jack is ready to go. Take a look at how well it works. And then what we want to lower it. It's great. And I checked the oil again. It was absolutely full before I put the plug in. So this was a Sears floor jack rebuild using a kit that you can readily get on um, eBay. And I'll leave a link. Um, this I bought in 82, I think, something like that. And it should last another... 40 to 60 years at least and uh, I hope those that inherited from me appreciate how nice it is. It's made in Japan, very well made, very heavy duty and I think we're good to go for quite a while. Please consider subscribing if you click like it helps the channel a lot. Thank you very much.